and, and the statewide officials and voting. So I would say that the way you have an impact, you know, how would I have a lot of clout when I go to, to Albany? What would give me a lot of clout? Well, what would, honestly, what would give me a lot of clout would the ability to say, I have 25,000 students in Stony Brook. Um, you know, a significant percentage of them are New York citizens. They vote. Their parents are New York residents. They vote. We have nearly 200,000 alumni. They vote. Okay, and so if you if you are not respecting SUNY, um, they're going to vote based on that. Well, that doesn't really happen. I mean, honestly, it doesn't happen. I mean, they don't believe that we deliver blocks of votes, and consequently, we don't have the kind of uh, firepower essentially when we go to Albany that other groups have, um, and that hurts us. So, to the extent that students um, are registered to vote. To the extent that you're expressing your comments to legislators about this, to the extent that your parents are expressing your comments to legislators. And we're reaching out to our alumni, we're trying to educate them on a number of these issues. Those are all really important things. But that, to me, is probably where I would try and target, uh, you know, if I were protesting, I would say that would probably be, to me, a more effective way of doing things than, than, than targeting me. But as I say, I'm, I'm happy to hear it. I'm visible. I've certainly been. Uh, you know, an advocate for the for FIA, the Public Higher Education Empowerment Innovation Act, and I'm happy to answer questions and talk to people about it. So, what do you think about the adversarial tone that they kind of take? I mean, do you think that hurts their cause? Uh, you know, it's it certainly gets attention. Um, you know, anytime you can, you know, kind of create a dichotomy, it gets attention. I, you know, I'm I'm their president. Um, you know, if there are students, I'm their president, and you know, I, I hope they realize. That you know, when I look at these issues, I really am trying to take uh, everybody's best interests at heart. But, but I'm always happy to listen to ideas and suggestions. I mean, I, you know, I think you know, I, I'm always happy to listen to people's ideas and and what they have to say. But but I do you know have to deal with certain realities. And you know, I, I have really gone, as I said. I mean, I've spent you know the past few months. I've spent a lot of my time meeting with legislators, a lot of my time talking to them about these issues. And, and as I said before, when I went to Albany last time, there was one message that was absolutely consistently clear, and that is there's no restoration money coming. So any discussion we have, if, if you begin the discussion by saying, you know, your job is to go get more money from the state for us, um, we've tried that. Um, not only we've tried that, but the unions have tried that and pushed. I mean, the UUP, other unions have pushed very hard to do that, and there hasn't been success. Uh, you know, in the past couple years. And I think it is really because it's not so much a priority issue. In the past, I think it was. But now, it's really just a question, there's just not money there. Um, you know, as I say, the $9.5 I think, is a real number. So and the question is, how do we deal with this, and how do we find ways to try and maintain quality? Yes? Um, Eric Scatoro with the Stony Brook Independent. If FIA goes through, how long is it going to take for the estimated 6, .6 to 7 percent increases to actually cross the border of stopping the bleeding and actually growth, growth on campus? It's a great question, and, and we'd have to look and model. It depends in part on how much of a deficit we're dealing with. I think what it does is, if this would pass, again, because of some of the predictability that's built into it, so if we knew that we would have a 6 to 7% increase a year from tuition, it allows us to do much more planning than we can do now in terms of our budget. So it would give me some flexibility to say, okay, I can try and spend some money that I had committed to something else uh, right now to cover some shortfalls, because I know next year I could pay it back from a known revenue source. We don't have that ability now. So right now, the way things are, I don't know what my tuition is going to be in any particular next year or so on, which makes it impossible. So I would say the first couple years, honestly, would be spent in trying to fix some of these holes we have right now uh, and making sure we restore some lost faculty spots um, so I think some of the growth is going to be deferred just because of the budget uh, crisis we have right now. And I think right now we're really honestly talking about trying to uh, maintain some status quo issues. I mean, as you know, we've lost some uh, uh, adjunct faculty. Um, we're, you know, I'm concerned about this. And I think part of this would be just playing catch up. Yeah. 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 Um, in terms of, you mentioned status quo, something that uh, SUNY Chancellor Zimfer, she's obviously been very forceful coming to the defense of FIA recently uh, on the SUNY advocate site in, in lieu of the March 4th protests at, you know, here at Stony Brook and, and other campuses. She went so far as to declare that you know, these people who are opposed to FIA are defenders of the status quo, which technically speaking would be true. They do want to keep tuition at the levels that they currently are. Uh, is that something you agree with, that characterization of a defense of the status quo? Um, what are your thoughts on, on 
what what chances are present? So, so I hate to disagree with the chancellor ever. Um, you know, she, in, in some sense, she's my boss. Um, but but I think you know, I would say what she's saying is is that um, I don't think the status quo is working right now. I mean, I would say that right now it's not working. We're we're not getting restoration of state funds, um, and we're we're we have fixed uh, increases that we have to deal with. So labor related negotiated contracts that we have to deal with. And so, you know, then the question becomes, where does the money come from to support this? And how do we maintain quality in that setting? And as I said, I, I think how things have done in the past have not worked to SUNY's benefit, and they haven't worked to Stony Brook's benefit, and they haven't worked to your benefit. So the question then is how we change. I, I'm open to other ideas. I mean, I think if, if people come forward with additional ideas, I'm happy to listen to them. Um, but, you know, we, we had a great visit um, from a, a university president um, a, a couple weeks ago who runs one of the major state universities and I won't, I won't mention it's, I don't know if it's a secret but I don't know if he I don't know if he wanted to be quoted let's put it that way but but what he said was he said you know great state universities um, require one of two things they either require really good state support high levels of state support um, or they require flexibility um, to be able to do the kinds of things in terms of adjusting tuition, in terms of doing public-private partnerships. Those are the two things that are required. And if you have one of those things, you can have success. If you have neither of them, um, then it's very difficult to have success. And I would say that, you know, at the State University of New York, um, our percentage of funding right now, you know, is, is not bad compared to other state universities. So I don't want people to think I'm, I'm whining. I mean, I would love to have more. I think, you know, the more we can invest in public higher education, the better. Um, but the cuts we've had recently over the past few years, which have taken us from about a 33 percentile to about a 23 percentile, um, have really been devastating. And if you do that and don't give us another way to raise revenue, then we're in the kind of fix we are. So I understand, you know, Chancellor Zimfer's kind of concern that, you know, that, that people are kind of fighting, let's keep everything the same. Um, but it's not possible because we have costs that don't allow us to keep it the same. And that, to me, is the challenge. Yes. Uh, so my name is David Mazza. I'm the VP of Communications at the Undergraduate Student Government. Uh, a few weeks ago, we formed a committee to look at FIA uh, and budget cuts and tuition hikes in general, and I think your office got a press release. Um, and we just basically have a few questions about how the act would be implemented. Uh, one of the things we noticed that was really interesting was that uh, something about essentially the student activity fee could be levied by the state rather than by you know, the FSA and us. Uh, so it seemed as if to basically supersede the student, student government, uh, which was interesting. Uh, another thing was that although there's a 6 to 10 percent cap on just the annual increases, uh, differential tuition by program, uh, there, we didn't see any real cap there. Uh, all it said was that to create that sort of tuition hike, you'd have to consult with the Sternberg Council, the student government, and I guess the University Senate, something to that effect. Um, is that in your planning and what do you plan to do for that? So let me, let me uh, answer the second question first. Um, so, so clearly you've, you've read the act very carefully. Um, it, it does say that exactly. I mean, so there, it's not clear about a, a cap essentially on, on campus or program-wide differential tuition. Um, I think, as we talked about before, that we would be very much guided by, uh, uh, you know, first of all, it's the SUNY Board of Trustees that still makes that final decision. So, so, so the campus is applied to the SUNY Board of Trustees essentially for what would be considered, uh, yeah, STR. So, 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 so the campuses would have to apply to the SUNY Board of Trustees for any component of differential tuition. And then as part of that application, the idea would be they'd have to have input from the students. Um, they'd have to have input for the University Senate, um, have to have input from the council and other interested parties. So the idea then is to really make sure that everybody's informed, everybody knows what's happening, and, and everybody knows what's, uh, uh, what, what's on the table. Um, I think the advantage, you know, people have said, what's the advantage of having some campus-wide, essentially, differential tuition? It really reflects the fact that a university center like Stony Brook has costs um, that are different um, from other schools. So, so fundamentally, our costs of running Stony Brook um, both in terms of the kind of facilities we operate, so the kind of research opportunities we provide, the kind of laboratories that are necessary to do this are higher. And, and in some sense, some of our faculty costs are higher too. If you have, I mean, you know, that's, 
you, you pay a price to have great faculty. Right. Um, and so to have members of the National Academy of Science, uh, you know, uh, Institute of Medicine and so on at Stony Brook, um, that does cost more. So the idea, and, 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 and to be fair, part of that is in our state support component. So if you look at our state support component, it 